All set? Hello, everybody. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, networking acceleration today and how we can enable that with the cyborg servers and OpenStack. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll talk about why we need hardware acceleration in the first place. We'll talk about some usage models for how we can use networking, uh, etc. We'll talk about where Cyborg is today. We don't have networking support yet. We'll talk about how to enable networking support in Cyborg. And in you know, 10 minutes, that's pretty much all we can do. Okay? We had a more detailed discussion of Cyborg and a project update. Uh, we can talk about it also later. Okay. So why do we need to accelerate networking at all, right? So if you look at where we are with OBS switching and other forms of network switching, they, they consume a lot of CPU, so especially as you move towards 100 gigabits per second, the packets rate go up. So there's an increasing need to offload them to uh, some kind of a hardware accelerator. Uh, that's also needed for improving latency and jitter, et cetera. And uh, this is one primary reason. Um, as we move towards 5G, it's another important trend. We are seeing there's a strict requirement for latency and jitter needs. And we are kind of not there yet with software-only implementations. And furthermore, the 5G standards are also evolving. It's not a, some fixed thing. So we not only need accelerators, we want them to be programmable. So it's important to have a, not just some kind of ASIC accelerator, the ASSP, but something which can be programmed repeatedly as the standards evolve. And the third motivation is edge computing. This actually adds on to the previous two. As we enable new applications like augmented and virtual reality, they have stringent latency needs of their own, and that's going to complicate things further for other needs. So uh, we want accelerators to be programmable and also which are deployed either in the edge or the data center, possibly a combination of both. So these are the reasons which are, which are driving us towards that. So within OpenStack, as you may know, we've got a cyborg project for enable accelerators. And what it essentially aims at is lifecycle management for all accelerators. It's not only for GPUs or smart NICs or FPGs, any one of them, but all of them. And we already have support for many of these types. We don't have networking support yet, but we are increasingly hearing from uh, various partners and uh, customers. We should be supporting some form of smart NICs uh, and, and programmable accelerators and so on. Okay? So there's a quick overview of Cyborg. It's only 10 minutes, so I won't spend too much time on this. But basically, Cyborg is a service. Uh, it's vendor neutral, like pretty much any other service. It's also supposed to be hypervisor neutral. Uh, the way it works is that we've got an API server in the controller, along with Nova, Neutron, and everybody else. And we also have our own database and a conductor. So it looks like a regular project in that sense. Uh, we also have an agent running on every compute node. And that agent has a bunch of libraries which we call the drivers. The drivers in this context are basically libraries which the agent can load and which are device specific. So for example, we've got a cyborg driver for NVIDIA GPUs, we've got a cyborg driver for Intel FPGAs and so on, okay? So uh, plus for FPGAs, we'll also use the glance storage for storing the bit streams along with the VM images. Uh, please stop me if you have any questions. Okay. So why do we need Cyborg in the first place? If you are looking at GPUs today, you typically use them with PCA whitelists, and they're typically difficult to use. They're basically it's a configuration file which you need to keep updating. We had a forum this morning where we had several operators present. They also pretty much concurred that it's a difficult thing to use. But when it comes to programmable devices, it won't, won't, won't even work anymore because you could have a FPGA with a certain PCI ID with, let's say, gzip inside it. Another FPGA with something else like a VRAN workload inside it. So looking at the PCI ID does not tell you what's inside it. So you can't ask for a VM with a gzip offload or a VM with a VRAN offload. You have to necessarily go by a PCI ID. So with programmable uh, components, you can't even use PCI IDs anymore. Cyborg solves those problems by doing two things. You don't need a config file. You don't need host aggregates. We are going to use the drivers to discover the devices and populate them in placement automatically so NOAA can query it and get everything in a holistic fashion. Uh, plus, we also find the things inside the drivers. The cyborg drivers can find out what kind of function is implemented, 
what bit stream is programmed, and so on. So all the information is available to enable use cases like I want an accelerator with VLAN offload. We can make requests like that. Okay? So the key idea here is that we're going to leverage placement. right? So we're going to uh, create resource providers in placement for every accelerator type. If a smart NIC or a GPU or a FPGA, we'll create a resource provider for that. And the device properties will become traits in placement. Uh, so we've got a whole thing worked out. So uh, the way you would use that today is that you would configure the drivers. So you, if you've got an NVIDIA GPU, for example, you'll put the GPU driver. If you've got a smart thing, you'll put the corresponding driver in the future, et cetera. Then you'd load up any ups, bit streams you may have for FPGAs. You, then you define something called a device profile. So normally in NOAA, you've got a notion of a flavor, right? In the flavor, you define extra specs for additional resources. We just took the same concept and factored them out. Because if you put everything in flavors, the number of flavors will explode. We don't want a flavor explosion. Uh, typically, operators do use flavors for billing and accounting. So we don't want too many flavors lying about. So we put them in a separate thing called a device profile. There's an example of a device profile in the bottom. So essentially, it looks like extra specs. You've got a notion of resources and traits, except that Instead of plain key value uh, pairs, we you know made it a kind of a JSON format. It's kind of easier to manipulate. Okay? Uh, so you do all that stuff, and finally, you can just create a VM with a particular flavor. And we got a whole workflow worked out at NOVA for how we can launch a VM with, with this flow. Okay? So this is what we have today. And the question then becomes like, how are we going to adapt this for networking? To so understand that, we first need to understand how it works today without networking. So the very broad idea is that when the NOVA sees a device profile name, the flavor, it's going to query Cyborg first and say, give me your device profile information. So it gets the resources and traits requirements from Cyborg and merges them with other request groups from the flavor and other sources. It makes a consolidated list and then queries placement with that. So when placement returns the values, the, it returns not only the compute host, but also the devices. It's going to say, here's a compute node as a resource provider, and the device is a nested resource provider. So essentially, it's running as a tree of candidates. So the, basically, the various candidates are available to NOVA, and the NOVA scheduler is going to pick one of those. When it picks one, it's essentially it's picking a host and a device. In contrast to today's, so there's only a host involved, right? So once it does that, it's going to call back into Cyborg. For those of you familiar with Neutron, uh, we got a notion of port binding. So we have a similar idea here in Cyborg called uh, accelerator request binding. So essentially, you choose an accelerator request and say, bind this to this host and this device. So once you do a selection, call into Cyborg for binding. And binding, in this case, asynchronous, because it may involve potentially preparing the device or reprogramming it. So NOAA is not going to block on that. It's going to issue the bind request and move on. It's going to call into Neutron and Cinder and everything else. And while that's going on, it's also sending a message to the, the word driver. The word driver will finally query Cyborg to get all the details. So the, the broad idea is that instead of getting the PCI devices from a whitelist, they're going to get the PCI device from Cyborg after the device is prepared. That's the overall idea. And this is what we're currently implemented. We already have this in train. It's been implemented on the Cyborg side. On the NOVA side, we've got a bunch of patches. They are still being reviewed, so it's not fully merged. But this is what's been implemented on the Cyborg already. The question now is, uh, where do we go forward? Like first, we need to co complete the NOVA integration. And we already have many basic VM operations working with the accelerators today. Uh, that includes creation and deletion of VMs. You can pause, unpause, stop, start resume, all of those things. Uh, but we don't have networking today. So how do we get networking? So here's the meat of the idea, right? This is more like a proposal. We are kind of working on some ideas right now. It's not yet proposed in the community yet. But basic idea is, instead of setting a device profile name and the flavor, what if I set in a neutron port instead, right? So you may want to create a VM with one management port and let's say one offload port. The management port stays the same. You don't need anything new for that. There's no offload there. So you do it the old-fashioned way. But for the one which requires offload, you put this device profile which says, I want this trait on this kind of device. So if you put that in the 
uh, in the Neutron port, NOVA should be able to query Neutron, get those device profiles, combine them with other request groups, and do the placement query as before. So when it's choosing a candidate, it's actually taking the Neutron needs into account. Neutron today does not influence scheduling, but with this process, we are hoping that it can influence the NOVA scheduler itself. Okay? Uh, so we do that. So net result is like the old way that instead of getting a PCI BDS you no know, whitelist, we're getting it from Cyborg. Uh, Cyborg would have taken into account uh, what NOVA requested in the binding process. right? Once the Cyborg binding completes, you get the PCI BDS, and you pass that to Neutron for binding. So Neutron ports today get the PCBDs from the whitelist. Instead, you get them from Cyborg and then pass them to Neutron. So from Neutron's point of view, it's very little change. The one fact, the only thing we're proposing is that in the port binding, there should be a device profile name as a key, a key value pair. It's the only change you need in Neutron. At least as Sorry? Uh, we are proposing in the U cycle. Whenever it gets merged, it gets merged. It's very difficult to uh, foresee when it's going to get merged. But we want to propose this as a patch in the new cycle. Yep. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, yes. So we propose to submit a specification and our associated patches. We'll also talk to you guys in, in the course of PTG. Yeah, cool. OK. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yeah, that's the basic, yeah. Sorry, can, can you please use the mic? Uh, the question was, can you get rid of the NOVA compute? I have a Cyborg and nine drivers without OpenStack in play. So uh, can you use a Cyborg agent and drivers without? Okay. I suppose now today I have a bare metal. So okay. on top of that, like I would be uh, having my DPDK drivers and then doing my uh, abstraction with the DPDK for the underlying leaks. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, my DPDK provides me uh, the uh, flexibility to whitelist the next and uh, um, move it to the fast data path. Okay. Usually. Okay. So uh, can can I inflict a cyborg agent and drivers there? Like like I I I no, uh, not even have my uh, open stack agents coming into play. Probably. So you are talking of DPDK inside a VM or DPDK in the host? DPDK on a host. On a host. Okay. Yeah. It is a slightly different use case, yes. Right, right now, we've been focusing mostly on VM level offloads. Okay. I think what you're thinking about is something like OVS offload or offload from the host. Right. Even if that is the case, uh, can I spawn my VM on a bare metal using Libvirt? And I have my, uh, can I have my cyborg agents there? Right. Uh, or it yes. is heavily dependent on Nova Compute as of today. The fundamental operation of cyborg in terms of programming. By itself, the discovery and programming are almost a standalone. Okay. So it should be possible to list your inventory, do programming, etc., without Nova being involved. The reason why we're involving Nova is to put up VMs. Okay. So the the act of spawning a VM through right, world driver, right. okay. scheduling everything is in Nova today. So right. say suppose I have an alternate, in, uh, in fact, Nova, which which uh, spawns my VM. Uh -huh. So my cyborg can still be used there. Uh, yes, in principle, yes, we need to have the right way to call into Cyborg to do all the preparation. If it's like uh, API compatible with the right. way no, uh, NOVA works today, it should work. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So you are suggesting API compatibility for uh, taking off compute, NOVA compute from there? Uh, API compatibility for the way you call into Cyborg. Okay. Cyborg already has defined some APIs in a standard way. NOVA okay. simply calls into them. The standard REST API is documented. Correct. It's version 2 API which is published in train. So we just call it to them, it should work. So yeah. the subsequent question to that is, OpenStack controller is there, right, in the yeah. left side? Yeah. Uh, I don't need Glance, Neutron, Keystone. If I put a Kubernetes controller, how does it work? Oh, I see. OK. Uh, that's a little different question, because Cyborg API controller, the mm -hmm. server, is actually running on the con uh, OpenStack controller. Oh, I see. Right. It's, it's part of the REST API server. So you don't have standalone version right now? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's tied into the OpenStack infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Okay. 